Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Saturday, June 27th, 2020. Wow, we are almost in July. We're, out, we're around 130 days out from the general election, so uh, there's a lot that needs to be discussed. Today we're going to be talking about the House elections. I think the last time I went really in depth with this was probably early May, late April. So now we have some updated ratings. In fact, they were updated yesterday, so I think it is very interesting um, that I decided to make the video today. Um, you know, Cook Political Report usually releases their numbers at either the beginning or the end of the month. So um, I'm just happy that they have new updated numbers, especially including California's 25th district, where they had that special election in which the Republicans picked up a House seat, which was one of the worst showings for the Democratic Party in a special election since the Massachusetts Senate special election under President Obama's first term. So on your screen, you have the Cook Political Report competitive races. Essentially, all of the other races that are not on your screen are considered safe for the Republicans and the Democratic Party. Now, we have a likely lean and Democratic House of Column, and the same thing goes for the Republicans. The only things we're really going to be focused on are the Democratic and Republican toss-ups, because realistically, a lot of these lean and likelies are probably going to go to their respective parties due to the effect of a down-ballot voter. So, for example, uh, Arizona's 6th District could likely go to the Republican Party if Donald Trump performs well in the state. If he underperforms, those Republicans that may have supported President Trump may not be voting for Republicans down ballot either. A lot of people do tend to vote for the same party they vote for on the presidential level, but there are some exceptions. So when we take a look at the Democratic toss-up, we have 16 Democratic seats and six Republican seats that they would consider toss-up. RCP is a little bit more conservative in their estimation, giving us a total of around 30 toss-up seats, with the rest being uh, the rest of the seats lean through safe. So when you look at some of the areas that there are toss-up seats, we're actually going to go ahead and use the RCP map because it gives us the House seats highlighted instead of just giving us a general elect, uh, House of Representatives map. We see Iowa, which actually has almost every single seat, no, every single seat, competitive. All four of them, three toss-up, one lean Republican. And I honestly think that some of these seats could be characterized, uh, maybe one could be characterized as a lean Democrat, but realistically, they're all going to be competitive. This just has to do with the fact that the districts themselves are going to be pretty close. The reason why I think they characterize um, former representative or current representative Steve King, but he won't be because he lost his primary at his district competitive is just because of the fact that there will be no longer an incumbent on the ballot, but that race did go to the GOP in 2018. So when we take a look at the nation, a nationwide map, we don't see too many toss-up seats in the South. In a Republican stronghold area, we typically don't see that much happening for the Democratic or Republican parties. But when we take a look at some of these swing states, states such as Arizona have three seats up. Uh, New Mexico has one. Texas has a number of them. Uh, Michigan, uh, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin has a singular district. Minnesota, Iowa, um, you know. Taking a look at some of these swing states, they do have some competitive districts. This also has to do a lot with the Republican Party having a number of retirements. Nothing similar to what we saw in 2018. There were a bunch of retirements, but everything that you see on your screen that's considered to be, uh, you know, darker red. This right here um, means that there will be a Republican incumbent retiring. We see it very largely in Montana because it is a single district and a number of retirements in Texas, um, a number of retirements all around the country. Now, it's again, nowhere similar to where it was in 2018, but I will say that retirements are never good, especially for a party that is expecting, uh, not expecting, but wants to gain seats in the uh, House of Representatives. The Democratic Party is at a very good standing. They are holding on to a number of seats that were previously Republican seats. Keep in mind we're working with the same exact House map as 2016, a time when the Republican Party won 241 seats and the Democrats won 194. Two years later, it's flipped. The Democratic Party has 235 seats after 2018. Again, New Jersey flipping from Democrat to Republican with one of those representatives and then a California special election. But the Republicans did end up with 199 seats because North Carolina's 9th district did not certify the results or the House wouldn't seat whoever won that race. So when we look at 2020, we're working with actually a very similar landscape. I mean, the same exact House map, which means the Republican Party very well could go back and win what they won in 2016, but that's likely not going to be the case. Not only does the Democratic Party have the incumbency advantage and the Republican Party losing a number of incumbents, they also have the presidential election year advantage. This is what I uh, would describe as the Democratic Party gaining seats in a presidential election year because of increased turnout. The Democratic Party never really does well in midterm elections unless it was 2006 or 2018. And that's not just because there was a Democrat incumbent in 2010 and 2014. President Obama won a very large Electoral College majority. The Democratic Party led in the generic ballot leading up into the year 2010 and 2014. The Republican Party took over from that point on. In 2018, 
The Republican Party had never led once in the generic ballot average. The Democratic Party at one point in time under Obama led by 10% nationwide. So the midterm elections actually could have proven to be uh, difficult for the GOP if the Democrats had continued at that pace. Unfortunately for them, uh, for the Democrats, that was not the case. In 2018, it flipped. Again, the Democratic Party had the factor of the realizing that Obama, uh, sorry, not Obama, that Trump was very unpopular, and they used that, and they were able to win back the House majority. But when we take a look at 2016, the Democrats picked up six House seats, two Senate seats, despite Donald Trump winning an astonishing Electoral College uh, victory. With everyone thinking that Trump was going to lose, you know, there wasn't really that much turnout on the Democratic side. There also wasn't just a number of support for down ballot races. A number of key Senate races were lost for the Democratic Party, but they also gained some in some areas that they weren't expecting to win or areas that they were expecting to, um, you know, come close in, but definitely win in other races. For example, Senator Pat Toomey in the state of Pennsylvania um, or the Wisconsin Senate race, which is both of them are actually up in two years from now. So depending on who the incumbent is, they could be ousted uh, if they're not going to retire already. Uh, Wisconsin's tricky on that one. But when we take a look at this 2020 House race, I really think the Democratic Party is at a very good standing as we look at it today. Looking at the numbers, just looking at the areas that the uh, Republican Party needs to make up, and they need to win a total of 21 seats. Um, you know, that means they would have to carry pretty much every single seat in the toss-up column uh, except one. They would need to carry all six Republican ones. I'm assuming that would be the easiest thing to do, except for the fact that there are now three open seats in this area. And California's 25th, which, yes, may have had a special election victory. But Doug Jones is also uh, living evidence that special election victors may not always end up with the favorite to win the race in the general election season. For the Democratic toss up, they would need to carry 15 out of these 16 to even narrowly win the House majority. We will never really reach back to those Republican numbers in 2020. It's possible in 2022. If Joe Biden is an unpopular president, the Republican Party very well could win back the House of Representatives. That's the easiest thing to get because every single seat is up every two years. For the Senate, it's a little bit trickier. It's every six years and they do it by class. So essentially, if the midterm year isn't favorable to the Democratic Party, they aren't going to win them. 2018 was a perfect example. They were defending numerous seats. The Republicans weren't defending that many. And a number of those uh, Democratic seats were in areas Trump won. If it had been a Hillary Clinton presidency, we possibly could see a 58 to 42 majority in the United States Senate for the GOP if 2018 had been uh, as expected and continued its trend of being negative towards the Democratic incumbent or Republican incumbent. So I don't think any of these lean Democratic seats or lean likely Democratic seats are probably they're probably not going to go to the GOP at this point in time. President Trump is a hindrance to the Republican Party right now. He's losing them the generic ballot nationwide, which is another point I have to get to. He's losing them Senate seats. He's losing them the presidential election. So if anything, if this was a midterm year, I would say that actually the GOP has a better chance at gaining seats. To be completely honest, even though uh, the Democratic Party gained a number of seats in 2018, if we were working off the current Senate uh, House map, the GOP could possibly gain some seats but now i don't think it's possible the gop is at a very i would say horrible point the only gain they're going to get is from michigan's third district with justin amash and he's a former republican so they won that back in 2018 in fact the democratic party is favored to get two seats in the likely democratic column north carolina's second and sixth district which come as a result of redistricting and texas's 23rd district a uh, district that they lost in 2018 but are expected to carry in 2020 and when you take a look at these Democratic toss-up seats, the Democrats very well could lose all 16. Okay, they could lose all six Republican toss-up seats and still only be behind, you know, by uh, practically one House seat nationwide. And the likelihood of that happening is, you know, zero to none. So when we take a look at the generic ballot as well, we also have to compare it to where it was in 2018. The Democratic Party practically had a nine-point lead nationwide, 50.7% to 42%. Uh, that was a very large lead. If you take a look at the actual results, comparing it, uh, the Democratic Party had roughly the uh, same exact margin over the uh, Republican Party, almost identical in terms of well within the margin of error. So if anything similar happens in 2020, the Republican Party isn't in for um, anything good for the House elections. And like I said, if it happens again, we are seeing an almost identical match of what happened back in 2018 that we're seeing in 2020. The Democrats have only lost one percentage point off the generic ballot, comparing it to a Democratic wave year to a general election year. In 2016, the generic ballot was favoring the Republican Party on Election Day. They led in the generic ballot and they won it. In 2018, the Democratic Party led in the generic ballot and they won it. In 2014, the Republicans led in the generic ballot and they won it. In 2012, the Democrats, uh, the Republicans led in the generic ballot and won it. In 2010, same thing. 2008, same thing. 2006, same thing. You cannot pick and choose which polls you want to believe. They cannot be correct for the past couple of decades, practically, and then be incorrect 
all of a sudden because people believe the Republican Party is going to win the House back. Realistically, it's not going to happen. It's a lost cause. Wasting money on these races will only make the Senate a lot more, uh, a lot harder to retain. And I can't believe I'm saying that. A year ago, I would have said that the Senate more than likely was going to the GOP. Now I have a lot more faith in the Democrats just because of the fact that Donald Trump is single-handedly bringing down that party with his uh, abysmal approval rating nationwide, abysmal national polling numbers, abysmal statewide numbers. I mean, Donald Trump, again, is going to bring down the Republicans on this nationwide map. The fact that they're only getting 41% in polling data is not a good sign. In 2018, again, they got 42%. You know how much uh, percent of the vote they got? They got 45%, meaning they increased by 3%. So even if they increase, based off this number, it goes up to 44%, meaning the remaining 56% is voting against the GOP, which is definitely nothing good. Even though the Democrats, they're, they were at 50.7% uh, in 2000. Uh, 18 okay they increased that by three percent so if, if the same thing happened for the uh democrats uh, the republicans as the democrats so that means they're at 49 percent right now they could go up to you know 52 percent what's saying they couldn't gain more than that if donald trump continues this trend and makes the republican party seem to be um you know aligning with him wholeheartedly donald trump today um, there's been discussions of a number of black supporters of President Trump that are wavering th their reelection bid. I mean, they're, they're wavering their support from him because, um, sorry, withdrawing their support. I don't know why I said wavering. Because of the fact that uh, he's in full fledged support of Candace Owens and her comments made about, um, you know, a bunch of the victims of police brutality. It's not just George Floyd. It's just a number of, um, you know, black victims in this country that uh, people are trying to, or at least Candace Owens is trying to portray as somehow, um, that these people didn't deserve, I mean, did deserve what happened to them. And I think a lot of that, um, I guess you could say, what the Democrats are painting as anti-black sentiment from the president and from the White House is resonating uh, with these black voters, with these minority voters. And I think Donald Trump's approval rating dipping from an already, you know, single digit percent to even lower uh, support amongst black voters or if you take a look at just Hispanic voters or literally any other demographic, even white voters, Donald Trump is losing in key demographics um, and losing in areas that he needs to win in. OK, white educated voters, they need to be sure not in support of him fully, but still need to give him a pretty solid chunk of their support. He's not getting that right now. Biden leads them by 28 percent amongst the white non-college educated voters. He has a 19 point lead. Donald Trump has a 19 point lead, which is nothing compared to where he was against Hillary Clinton. I mean, we saw a lot stronger of a lead for him over her, uh, not only in polls, but on the general election day. So Donald Trump is uh, bringing down Republicans nationwide, and these House numbers completely reflect it. Taking, I mean, it's all intertwined. Yes, I got off a little bit of a tangent discussing the presidential race, but the performance of President Trump um, will pretty much just outline the performance for the GOP on the Senate and House levels. If people aren't happy with the president in a presidential election year, they're not voting for him, and they're also not voting for his party members, which is why a lot of these seats, which were previously characterized as likely or safe in 2016 or 2014 or even 2012 in a year Obama carried uh, the presidency by a very large margin, uh, over 100 electoral votes. That puts the Republican Party at a very different predicament. I mean, you could find a Republican who opposes President Trump, but will they win their primary? Okay, yes, you could win your primary, but will you win the general election supporting Trump full, uh, you know, full fledged support of President Trump? It's very tricky for Republicans now. Okay, you see a number of calls to for Lisa Murkowski to resign, or uh, you know, a number of other bipartisan Republicans that aren't fully in support of President Trump's reelection bid, um, and calling them and trying to push them into irrelevance. Paul Ryan, John Boehner, Mitt Romney. Um, again, these Republicans who may be in firm opposition to President Trump. Sure, that may help them amongst Democratic voters, but it also alienates a lot of the Republican Party. So these Republicans are faced with a very difficult task. The Democrats can't really go wrong. It's Biden or no one. For the Republicans, it's Trump or maybe Biden or I'm not telling you who I'm voting for. But, you know, any of the latter two are pretty much deeming your reelection bid not good just because people won't vote for you. Republicans won't. Democrats won't. It's going to be very difficult for a lot of these Republicans. So uh, as we enter into November with 100 and I think 129 or 130 days left until the general election, um, we have a lot to look at. But the House races probably won't change much. The Democrats are still the favorite and they probably still will hold on to their majority, possibly even gain seats considering the trajectory of this race at this point. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. On your screen is a video for you and then a playlist for my 2020 election nights. I only have around four 
from 2020. So you can go ahead and watch some of those, but you can, go, can always go ahead into my channel on the left. If you subscribe, please subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and check out the Instagram and the Twitter. I do post pretty frequently on the Instagram. I'm starting to bring back up the Twitter. And yeah, thank you all for watching this video. Comment down suggestions below, please, because um, this was, uh, this not this video, but the video that I'm going to be doing later today was actually a um, requested video from one of you guys. So again, I do read all the comments. Um, and again, thank you all for watching this video for the third time, and I will see you all later today.